be circumcised. It doesn't do a whole lot of good to possess God's Word. What good is it to be a Jew? What profit is there? And this is his answer, much every way, verse 2, chiefly because unto them were committed, what? The oracles of God. Now what are the oracles of God then? The Mosaic Law, the Old Testament. So now go back to Hebrews 6, verse 12. For the time that you've been around Christianity, you ought to be teaching it. But instead, you have to be retaught the Mosaic Law, and not just the Mosaic Law, but the ABCs of it. What he's saying is this, you have been around Christianity long enough to be teachers of Christian truth, but instead, you are so infantile, you need to be taught the ABCs of Old Testament truth again, because you don't understand the meaning of that. Listen, if a guy understood the picture book of Old Testament sacrifices, he'd come to the New Testament and accept it, wouldn't he? You don't even understand the ABCs of of the Old Covenant, the oracles of God. You're like those who need milk and not meat. What is that? That's a baby. You need to go back to the spiritual goo-goo stage and pick up the baby book again and look at the pictures. So he is referring here, friends, to Jewish people who are stuck at the right at the crossroads of coming to Christ, and they've been hardened and dulled by hearing and not responding. Now he says, you, you've even forgotten the significance of your own ABC. Somebody needs to sit you down and teach you Mosaic Law, because if you could really learn the Mosaic Law, you'd know that the New Testament was right. Jesus, when He taught the disciples on the road to Emmaus, opened the Scriptures and taught them out of Moses and the prophets the things concerning Himself. If they knew that, they would know Him. Jesus said to the Jews, search the Scriptures, for they are they that speak of Me, John 5. You need to go back to the Mosaic Law again, which you pride yourselves on. You're like those who can only have milk and not solid food. Verse 13, he describes them further. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now notice this verse very carefully. The word unskillful, aperos, means without experience. Everybody in your situation, back with the ABC book, using the milk, is inexperienced in a doctrine about righteousness. There's no definite article in the Greek. What it says is, people in your situation are inexperienced in righteousness. Now tell me this, can a Christian be inexperienced in righteousness? No, not in the technical sense, because when you were saved, you were granted the righteousness of Christ, right? You've experienced it firsthand. He's not talking about Christians. He's saying you people are still stuck in the Old Testament and you have never experienced true righteousness. That comes with receiving Christ. You're stuck there. One way to translate the verse would be this. Everyone who is continually on a milk diet is completely without experience in the teaching about righteousness. He is a babe. These people were still stuck in the Old Testament, needed to relearn the ABCs of the Old Testament never really experienced righteousness. They were not redeemed people. Now notice the word babe, and I will make a couple of comments about it. The word is nepias, and I know that people have used this passage to teach about Christian maturity, and they say a babe is a young Christian and so forth. Well, in other passages, that is true. But beloved, the word babe does not have any salvation connotation at all. The only thing the word babe really connotates is a little squalling baby. But the word can be made analogous to anything you want to illustrate. And so here we cannot assume that just because the word babe is here, that it has to mean you're saved. The word nepios is used elsewhere in the New Testament, and there are several words that are used for the word babe or little child. But the word nepios is used elsewhere in the New Testament, I'll mark this, and it refers to a state of spiritual immaturity. It refers to a state of spiritual stupidity or ignorance. Sometimes it is used of Christians, yes. Sometimes it is used of non-Christians. Could a non-Christian be spiritually ignorant? Could a Christian be spiritually ignorant? Yes. There's two different things, but the illustration could go either way. Let me show you what I mean by that. Look at Romans 2.20, and here you have the same word used here, babe. It says this, the Jews prided themselves on the fact that they were 
guides of the blind, lights to them in darkness. Now Romans 2.20, instructors of the foolish, a teacher of nepion, of babes. Does babes there mean Christians? Did the Jews pride themselves that they were teachers of Christians? I hope to tell you they didn't. They prided themselves on the fact that they were the teachers of the spiritually ignorant. So all the passage is saying here in Romans 2.20 is that babes refers to somebody who doesn't know much. They're spiritually ignorant. It is so used that way again in Galatians as well. There is no way that you can make the word babe in the New Testament always refer to Christians. It just doesn't do that. It does refer to Christians in 1 Corinthians, doesn't it, where it says you're babes and I can't give you the meat, I have to give you the... Uh, milk because you're carnal, etc., and there it's talking about Christians. But here it simply means this, you people who are still back in the Old Covenant, who even have forgotten the meaning of the pictures of the Old Covenant by rejecting the New Covenant, you show us that, you are inexperienced in true righteousness, you are spiritually stupid. And this has nothing to do with Christians. It has to do with these Jews. Verse 14, solid food belongs to them that are grown up. Full age, those who by reason of use, that is, those who have experience enough to make decisions about good and evil. One thing a baby can't do is that. Would you agree to that? Can a baby make a decision about what's right and what's wrong? They don't know what to keep in their mouth and what to spit out. They don't know what to put in and what not to put in. They don't know what's good and what's bad. They don't make decisions. They have never exercised their senses to the place where by experience and use they know the difference between good and evil. He says, you're like babies. You don't even know what's good. You can't even make a right decision. You're so infantile, your senses have never been exercised to decisions about right and wrong. Now, you see his problem? I want to tell you about Melchizedek. I can't tell you about Melchizedek. You're too spiritually stupid. And instead of being at a place you've been around long enough, you should be teachers of this kind of truth. But instead of that, you've hung around so long rejecting this truth, you've become dull, sluggish, slow, and stupid, and now you need to be reviewed on your ABCs. And if you really knew your old covenant ABCs, you'd open your arms to the new covenant. But instead, you're like those people who can only have milk and not meat. You're just little babies. You haven't had your exercises. You don't know how to use your senses, and so you can't even tell the difference between good and evil. Friends, that is a classification of an intellectually knowledgeable Jew who has had the information put in his head, he's got a head knowledge of the truth, but he sits there in indolence and indifference and indecision and hardens and stupefies himself. And remaining holding on to the Old Covenant, not willing to forfeit the Old Covenant, he is nothing but a baby and he can't be taught the more advanced information of the New Testament. Now do you see the point? That's the problem. How am I going to tell you people about Melchizedek? All right, here's the solution, point two. Chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, here comes the solution. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment, and this will we do if God permit. Now, he gives them a simple solution. People leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Grow up, will you? Listen, growing up is tantamount to getting saved. The word perfection, now mark this, this is a good footnote and one you must keep in mind. The word perfection is always, always, always used in Hebrews to speak of salvation, never spiritual maturity, always salvation. See, now, wait a minute, John, where do you get that? Look at chapter 7, verse 11. 